Now that we've discussed the secrets of the universe, we can begin recording. So yesterday we had this problem. We want to find the maximum and minimum values of this uh, f of x, y equals 3x plus 4y subject to the constraint x squared plus y squared equals 4. So I'm looking for all the points that fit on x squared plus y squared equals 4. I'm looking for the highest values of the function where we have where we get take point and points on the circle. Points on the circle that give us the highest value of the function. Now, the level curves for the plane z equals 3x plus uh, 4y are going to be parallel lines. So let's look at a few. We start off with z equals 0, and we drew the line y equals negative 3 fourths x. That intersects the circle at two points. The value of the function at those two points, I call p and p prime, they're antipodal points, is 0. z equals 0 at the points p and p prime. We can do better than that. We have a higher value. If I go up to another level curve where z is equal to 4, I get y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 1. So at the points q and q prime, not antipodal points, at the points q and q prime, we have a value of z equals 4. But can we do better? Yeah, the next one that we drew, there's q and q prime. We drew yet another uh, one where z is equal to 8. There's a place where z is equal to 8. Where are we going to find the maximum value? What am I going to want to do with this level curve? Which level curve are we looking for? Not necessarily perpendicular to the radius. Describe it in terms of the constraint. Someone left blue paper. It's like perfect. They left blue paper, and my level curves are blue. So at this level curve, we get z equals 0. As we move in this direction, as we move these level curves in this direction, we keep getting higher values of z. Here's z equals 0 z equals 4, z equals 8. So what are we looking for? What am I got? What level curve are we looking for? Can I use this one? Is that level curve any good? No, why not? It sits outside of the constraint. That is not a level curve that we care about. So we don't even get a, a, a value there. Here, z is equal to 8. Do we have higher values than z equals 8? Is z equals a little bit more than 8. Is a little more than 8. Where do I stop? Not the distance. The distance between the level curve and the circle is always going to be 0 as long as there's an intersection. When the distance between these two points is equal to 0, that's a good way to describe it. What should we use to describe it? Remembering what we're doing. Set, taking the first derivative, setting equal to zero, and solving. What does the first derivative tell us? I can't do this in court because I'm asking so many leading questions. Objection. Leading the way. Describe this level curve's relationship to that circle. What is it? I know some of you know. I'm reading your minds right now, but no one wants to say it out loud. So I'm going to apply the seven second rule. Oh, I see you've played the waiting game before. I assure you, you cannot defeat me in the waiting game. I've only had one dose of coffee today. And so I'm not impatient.
They get mad when I carry the vodka in a vodka bottle. It looks too much like alcohol. Yeah. We keep getting higher values as long as I keep moving these, I uh, look for a level curve that's further away. But then we have to stop. At one point, we have to stop. It's kind of like when these two points kind of slam into each other and there's only one point of contact between the line and the circle. That was a great description when we had the two points come together. So here's R and R prime. We know that we're going to get to a point where we get the last point. We get just one point of contact between the, the level curve and the constraint, the circle one point of contact between the level curve and the circle. After this, we will not get any more values that are higher because we'll be off the constraint. So the level curve being our objective. And the circle being our constraint. So this will be the location of the maximum value of Z that we're going to find. We see what the different values of Z look like. They look like these parallel lines. They look like these parallel lines. They keep getting higher as I move off in this direction. But I got these two, these two points, that's Z equals zero. We can do better. At these two points, we have a Z equal four. We can do better. At these two points, we have a Z equal to eight. We can do better. This is gonna be the last point that we get. We have a value of Z that's still on the circle. Here we have higher values of Z. Past that point, we have higher values of Z, but they don't fit the constraint. There's no intersection between the level curve and the constraint. So what we're looking for is a level curve to be tangent to the constraint. Don't think about radius, because if we think about radius, we're going to think about circle. Circle just happens to be what the constraint looks like in this situation. I mean, gradient. Gradient. Let's think about what the gradient has to do with things. Gradient is uh, gradient is normal. The gradient is normal to, what is the gradient normal to? The gradient is going to be normal to the tangent, and the gradient is going to be normal to the level curves. The gradient is normal to the level curves. The gradient is normal to the level curves. So earlier we were saying, if we move our level curves in this direction, what direction is that? What is this direction? We can be more specific than that. More specifically, what is that vector? That vector is No, it has a name and it's written down on the paper in the corresponding color. It's a vector. What vector is it? 
It is the gradient vector. What does the gradient vector tell us? The direction of maximum increase. So we're going in this direction because that's the direction the gradient is telling us to go. The gradient says, if you go that way, you will be going in the direction of maximum increase. Notice that the slope of this line is negative 3 fourths. The slope of that line is negative 3 fourths. So a slope vector is a rise of negative 3 and a run of 4. And notice that that vector is perpendicular to the gradient. This is why I picked the plane. So here's the gradient of f. pointing us in the direction of maximum increase. It says go that way if you want to increase the value of the function. And so we keep going in that, that direction until we stop, until we fall off the constraint. Here's your direction of maximum increase. We're looking for where the level curve is tangent to the constraint curve. We're finding where the level curve is tangent to the constraint, constraint curve. If we look at each of these points, the, grad the gradient of our constraint is 2x, 2y. So the gradient at I drew this too small, fortunately. Wrong circle. So here is our gradient. It says, if you want higher values, go that way. And so we looked at the level curves, and we were waiting for the level curve, uh, the, the level curve to be tangent to the constraint. If we look at the gradient of the constraint, the gradient of the constraint is pointing out in all these different directions. We're looking for where the gradient of the constraint and the gradient of the objective are going in the same direction. Because at that point, the level curve will be tangent to the constraint. That's what we're looking for. I want the level curve to be tangent to the constraints. Another way of imagining that is we want the gradient of the objective in the same direction as the gradient of the constraint. That exclamation point is the last point of contact between the level curve and the circle. This is where the level curve is tangent to the constraint. And since that direction is where we were getting the, the higher values of the highest values of Z, that will be the point where we have the maximum value of Z. Or sorry, maximum value of F. We can make the same argument going in the other direction because we know that if we go in the opposite direction of the gradient, we'll get smaller values of Z. So we're looking for a parallel line. Uh, uh, sorry, we're looking for a tangent line to the constraints on the other end of the circle.
what we're looking for is the tangent. Uh, uh, we're looking for the level curve, the tangent to the constraint. That's the same place that the gradient of the constraint and the gradient of the function are going in the same direction. The gradient of the objective and the gradient of the constraint are going in the same direction. They don't have to be the same size. They just have to be going in the same direction. That means one of them will be a multiple of the other. The multiplier that we use is usually this lowercase lambda. The lowercase lambda is the Lagrange multiplier. What this part of the statement says is that the gradient of F is going in the same direction as the gradient of G, because one is a scalar multiple of the other. This is how we would encode that information mathematically. The other piece of information that we have is we want G to be constant. This is the system of this is a system of equations in X, Y, and Lambda. This is what we solve to find the maximum points. The thinking behind this is that I want to find where the level curves are tangent to the constraints. The way we'll find that is we'll find out where the gradients of the objective and the gradient of the constraints are going are in the same direction. It was made easy here because the, the uh, objective was always just this one direction. And the gradient of the constraint was always pointing out from the circle. We're just looking for where those two line up. That is going to be where we get our last level curve before we leave the constraint. The Lagrange multiplier does tell us information. If I solve for the Lagrange multiplier, it says delta F over delta G. It tells us how much the function is changing for some small change in the in the constraints. If I increase the constraint from four to four point one, say this will tell us how much the function changes, approximately. We make some change into the in the constraints, we'll get some change in the function. This will give us approximately how much. All right, that's it for today. This is uh, our uh, second part of constraint optimization. We'll see this uh, in. Um, We'll use this tomorrow to solve the problem and find that point. But for now, find that point without this particular process. That's it for today. I will see you all on tomorrow. Everybody have a good day, and thanks for playing.